Buenos días. Quiero una... Una barra. No hay mucho, no, no queda mucho. ¿Qué tenemos entonces? Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks and this river behind me is the Tagus River, one of the most important rivers here in Spain, known in Spanish as the Tajo and uh, up there, upstream, I have a town called Fuente Dueña de Tajo and that is the town that I'm going to look around today because as you guys know, this is a series that I'm doing here in Spain in small towns and uh, that's the one that we're going to look at today. Now I'll turn the camera around so you can have a look at the area that I am in here. Very green, lots of uh, water, lots of irrigation, and uh, I'm on a fairly historical bridge as well. And this area of Madrid is known as Las Vegas. There's a car coming past, I'll just let it go by. They get a bit noisy, the old cars, every now and again. But anyway, this area is called Las Vegas. Don't think it has anything to do with the Las Vegas in the United States, of course, the uh, casino town. No casinos here, but uh, this area here, because of the Vega, is uh, known as Las Vegas. Vegas and this is a fruit and veg growing area. Lots of good produce coming out of this part of Madrid. And there's also an interesting story about this town which I'll, I'll tell you guys further into the video. So uh, let's go and check out the town upstream there. Fuente Dueña de Tajo. Now just before I go into the town there's an interesting story about this bridge. In fact there's a sign up here which is uh, pretty worn but uh, it'll give us the history of this bridge and I think the famous Mr. Eiffel uh, from the tower in Paris or the Eiffel Tower in Paris had something to do with this bridge but don't quote me on that. And we can see here that it's in English Puente de Hierro it is known because of curious facts and anecdotes, because of its placement being an important road to the Portazgo de Alarilla and obliged passage to the Levante and Andalusia. It was placed where it first was a ford and the boat of Maroma and later a bridge in Cord. It was one of the four hanging bridges of the Deputation of Madrid and the actual one in iron was asked for by the Deputation to the engineer José de Echeverria who went to France and asked for the construction to the same company, Imbert and Company, collaborating company with Eiffel. So there we go, it is true. Mr. Eiffel had something to do with this bridge in the background. Curious fact. Now while I'm down here by the river, we'll check out what the village has to offer in a minute. But from what I can see here, there's a castle. Not sure whether the castle is accessible, but we'll try to get there. And uh, an important fact about this town as well is that not only is it on the border between Madrid and La Mancha, but it's also on one of the most important roads in Spain, which is the Valencia Road. And I'll tell some stories about that road further on in the video. River down there, and if we look around here, we can see all of these lands that are irrigated from that river. And uh, again, I'll tell a story about that as we go through the video. And we can see over there, I think, uh, it looks like they're growing corn. So a very important food production town, or at least it was, this one here, Fuente Dueña de Tajo. Okay, so I'm back up in the town. We'll go and check out this uh, town here now. Uh, check out what some of the locals are doing. Just hit my head on the tree there. Uh, luckily, it's not a heavy branch. And uh, yeah, so we'll see what uh, life is like in this small town. Can't guarantee that I'll speak to any of the locals because my objective is to just look around, see what's happening. Uh, if conversation should arise, then obviously I'm going to partake, but I can't guarantee it. So uh, we'll go and check it out. And uh, also to head up to where that castle is and get an idea of the views because that's also very important historically uh, what has happened in this town in the past. So let's turn the camera around. And uh, the first thing that we're gonna see here is some of the architecture in this part of Madrid on the border with La Mancha, nice stone walls, two-story house, so a decent abode here, and uh, the main strip. And you always get an idea of what life is like in these towns by walking up the main strip. And uh, the only life that I saw in this small town when I came in was uh, at these three bars on the corner, or at least I think there's three bars, at least two, because I saw people sitting outside at at least two bars. So we'll go up here, check out what's happening. 
slow walk through the city. I might ask these gentlemen here if I can get up to the castle walking or whether I need to take the car and that will be a different plan if that is the case. So let's check it out. Hola, ¿qué tal? Para llegar al castillo se puede ir andando o hay que coger el coche. Andando, sí. Vale, gracias. Fenomenal. Hasta luego. So there we've got it. You can reach the castle walking. So that is going to be my next objective. There's the other bar that I was talking about, Maison Plaza. We'll go down here and check out what's happening. Fruteria Tajong. I imagine that a lot of the fruit in that shop comes from the surrounding fields, or at least I would like to hope that is the case. A couple of gents there having a conversation. I'll just cross over here. Now, we'll try and find the church. There's uh, always an important church in these towns. Very religious over the years have these towns been, and I think that's the church up there. We'll go and check it out. Or maybe it's down there. Let's have a look. Don't know. It's either that one there or that one down there. So I think it's this one here. We'll go and check out the church and see if I can remember some of the history. Now we're in a small town today, only around two and a half thousand people. And from what I've read, the population hasn't grown all that much over the last 200 years. I think it was around the 1,500 mark 100 years ago, and it's around 2,500 now. So we'll check it out. This looks to be the main square. Very quiet. A couple of the locals over there. Elderly population, which are very common in these towns because young people out and about working on a day like today. Now, what is this building? Let's have a look. It looks historical. Torre de Reloj. So it isn't the church. It's the clock tower. And we can get an idea here. If I point the camera up there, we can see the time. So it's 12.20 p.m. Just after midday, 20 minutes after midday. That's the time on the official clock tower here in this town de Tajon. And again, we have the description in English. Torre del Reloj. It's one of the symbolic constructions of the Fuente Dueña building of the 19th century, which housing the clock of the Villa, whose machinery is one of the oldest of the community of Madrid. The clock tower, bad spelling there, uh, down which is crossing the Calle Mayor and to which is integrated in the building of the town hall is built in stone and plaster and finishes with a banister in ironwork and a specimen of a hood which is protecting the bell. And there we have a picture of the tower, uh, probably just after it was painted. Uh, well, I don't think it was too long ago, but we can get an idea of what it's like here. Let's go through the, the archway. as we work our way up to that castle, following these two ladies here. Hope they don't think I'm stalking them. Don't think that's gonna be the case. Just stop for a bit of a conversation there. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Polite, as most people are in these towns. And I think we've got the elderly residents up here because there's five or six people in their 80s or 90s sitting outside. Again, I'll make conversation and ask them whether I can get up to the castle walking. We'll see if we get a response like we did from the, the blokes at the bar. Yeah, this is the residents. Buenos días, señoras. El castillo se puede llegar andando? El castillo? Andando se puede, ¿verdad? Sí, sí, se puede. Muchas gracias. Again, no problems there with the instructions. People willing to lend you a hand. Now they're talking about me. Now we've got the curtains here in the doorway as well, as we know, to keep out the flies.
And again, the typical architecture in this town, similar to the village that we saw last week or the town we saw last week, uh, whitewashed walls and also buildings that could use a coat of paint or some type of renovation works, especially when it comes to the bars and the balconies there, or at least the coat of paint. And this place up for sale. Now here we've got one of the most active locals in the town, having a siesta here, or just relaxing on the side of the street. And we look around again the town. Now, is that the church? Is that the church? That's the question. Let's have a look. Okay, now here we have the main street, the Calle Mayor, and this is the church, I believe. Not a lot of action happening at the moment. So uh, if we were expecting to see people, it's not gonna happen today, I don't think. I'll turn the camera around, Plata de la Iglesia, so you can see it there. Now a curious fact about this town was that back in 1937, the uh, Spanish Republican government put out a war propaganda movie called The Spanish Earth, and it was narrated by none other than Ernest Hemingway. And uh, a lot of these buildings that we're gonna see here today featured in that movie. Of course, back in those days, 1937, black and white, wasn't in color, so you don't get the same uh, quality of images that you're gonna get today, but an interesting movie it was indeed. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more about the movie as I go through this video today. So let's have a look at the church. Let's have a look at what they say. Again, there'll be a bad translation, no doubt. Iglesia de San Andres. So we can see here, dedicated to San Andres. It is a Baroque building of the, what's that? The 16th century or the 17th century, sorry, with some elements of former epochs. The entrance is carried out from a porch, which is supported by three Toscan columns. The church is in three naves with arches in the middle point on crossed way pillars at the backside of the altar with the classicist Baroque altarpiece dominated by a painting of San Andres, saint of the village after his martyrdom and death on a cross in form of a wing. At the Chapel of the Rosary exist paintings of the Presentación del Niño en el Templo y los Desposorios de María. Uh, down the Tower of the Bell Place is the baptizing font and a painting on a silk tray which describes St. Hippolyth pulled by horses, and I think I pronounced that name correctly. And here we've got a map as well which tells us exactly where we are. Now you might be wondering why these signs are in English. Well, I'll tell you that uh, this town, because of its location on that Valencia Road, obviously has a little bit of tourism here, and no doubt also because of that Hemingway influence back in 1937. I reckon that movie put this place on the map. Uh, don't know how many people have seen that movie, but uh, of course, as far as uh, Civil War uh, propaganda movies go, uh, it's right up there, I think. Now let's have a look at the times that you can come in for mass here. Uh, 7 p.m., we've got the residence. Uh, Saturday, 7 p.m., the church mass. And uh, Sunday, of course, the most important day of the week. 12 midday church mass there. So I don't think the church is open. Let's have a look at the outside. See a bit of rubbish lying around here because obviously kids come and sit down here and eat their pippas, their sunflower seeds and have a smoke, and have a glass of water, sandwich over there as well. So uh, young people not respecting the, the heritage or the patrimony of this town. And uh, let's have a look at the stonework here. Yeah, amazing. Amazing stonework. And you would think that in such an important place in the town, the owner of this house would come out and paint this wall, but not the case. Now, there's the church up there. Is it going to be easy to get up there? I don't know, but that is my next objective. So let's go. Let's see, I don't want to ask any more people for directions, even though I could have asked that bloke there, but I think if I go down this road here, I'll be able to get there. Let's check it out and see. Okay, let's check it out. See how we get to this castle. When I get to the top, I'll tell you a little bit about the history of the castle, what I have read online about it. An important castle it was back in the day, going back centuries and centuries. There it is up there. It's a castle in ruins. It's not one of these places that has been uh, 
uh, well kept over the decades. In ruins it is, but apparently you're allowed to visit it. And one of the things about this type of castle in Spain is that the local councils often don't recommend going to these places because obviously some of the uh, stones can fall and uh, you might get injured. So they uh, want you to keep away. Now, Fuente Salobre. Now this apparently is where the name of this town comes from, Fuente Dueña. It comes from this fountain here, which also I imagine has a very important historical past. And we can see, I don't know if you guys can see it in there, but there are fish. Is this water drinkable? No, agua no potable. So you can't drink it, the water is not drinkable. So uh, yeah, and uh, looking at it, yeah, I wouldn't be drinking that anytime soon, no matter how thirsty I was. So there's that castle. Now, how are we gonna get up there? That is another important question that I don't have the answer to. More cats here. Obviously this is a some type of uh, cat colony. We can see here, Colonia Felina Controlada. So this is set up by the local council, no doubt. There's at least three cats that I've seen running around there. And I think to get up to the castle, I need to go that way. I'm not sure. If there was somebody around here to ask, I would but there is absolutely no one in sight. So I'm not sure. Let's uh, check out this sign here. Hopefully not gonna disturb any more cats. There they are, look at kitty, 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 kitty. No, not interested are the cats. So these are some of the things that we've seen so far. So we've seen that uh, clock tower, the castle, gonna try to work my way up there now. We've seen the church, we've seen the bridge, and we've also seen the Plaza Mayor. But I'll head back to the Plaza Mayor on my way out. But uh, first, I wanna get up to the top here. So uh, let's see how I go about doing this. Is it this way? Is it this way? I've got no idea. Okay, now I've realized that that's a dead end up there. I was gonna go up there, but there's a fence. So I don't think the castle is accessible that way. Uh, there's some steps over there, not sure, but there's a road here. So let's have a look if this road will take us to the top. There is a path that I can see there as well. So I'm sort of deciding whether I'm gonna go up this road here or take the path. There's a gentleman down here, so I'm gonna ask him the best way to get up the, uh, to the top. Let me see, I'll just ask him and see what he says. All right, let's uh, initiate conversation. Hola, buenos días, señor. Para subir ahí arriba, ¿cómo es? ¿Por el camino este de aquí o es por un camino de, de pie? Arriba del todo. Sí, ¿se puede? Se puede, pero tiene que ir por ahí detrás. A, detrás. Por donde está la fuente esa que hay. Sí, ahí. sí. Ahí hay un, una carretera que sube y se entra por detrás. Ah, vale, de acuerdo. O sea, ¿dónde está esa fuente? Sí, por ahí. Ya, voy yo. Voy vale, para allá, gracias. Amigo. Vale. Castillo, después de un Sí, ¿no? Es de los musulmanes, ¿no? No, este era cristiano. Ah, cristiano. Pero servía para ver si los musulmanes Venían. subían hacia arriba a la península. Ah. Esta era de vigilancia. Se cuenta que había un túnel subterráneo que llegaba hasta el río. Ah. Ah, sí. ¿Es usted de aquí? Sí. Porque estaba viendo un, un, una película que se hicieron aquí ah, en el año sí. 37 sí. que está narrado por Hemingway. Hemingway y, 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 y Orson Welles, Welles también. Orson Welles. Es cierto. El director era un alemán o holandés. Es un alemán o inglés, creo que era inglés. Y está, está muy bien porque hay imágenes que se van perdiendo y queda en pues yo me, Claro, porque me imagino que hay gente de que todavía tiene parientes de aquel entonces, ¿no? Me imagino. Sí, 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 sí. Ya lo creo. Bueno, pues ahora va... Entonces, ¿por ahí? Por esas escaleras... Sí. ...hacia arriba. Ah, de acuerdo. O sea, que por detrás hay. Ya verá que hay un camino para subir arriba. Muy bien. Muchas gracias, señor. Nada. Hasta luego. Chao. So, an important piece of advice there. When in doubt, always ask a local. 
Now, let's tackle these stairs to get to this castle, which I thought was a Muslim construction, but apparently not, according to that gentleman. And I'm not going to doubt his word. It is a uh, Christian construction back in the day to keep an eye on the Muslims and make sure that they weren't advancing in the area. And that is why it is up on top of the hill, which most castles are. Now, this is really going to test my fitness. Okay, so I'm almost at the top, and as you can see, a magnificent building it would have been back in the day, but unfortunately, not anymore. Let's continue. And you can have your opinion on the Spanish Civil War. You don't hear a lot of people talking about it here nowadays, but it was a very important event, and uh, lots of people's lives, lots of families were destroyed during that ugly Civil War back in the mid to late 1930s. So uh, here we go, we're at the castle. All right, Castillo de los Piquillos. There are indications that it could have been built during the, what's that, the 12th century, uh, extended and rebuilt during the 15th century, I think that is. Its history is related with the reconquest and with the kings Alfonso the, can't read that one there, the 11th, I think, and Alfonso the 12th, first because he was the conqueror of these lands from the Muslims and for his romance and marriage with Thaida, Zayda, the Arabic princess, and the second one for the reconquest and because he gave the allowance of market to the village. Only is conserved a wall and part of the towers. The castle was with a large floor and it was irregular because it had been the seat of the kingdom during the epochs of Doña Urraca, wife of Alfonso I, the battle man. Following the legend, during the nights he was walking the passages along in order to visit the Muslims. In this castle was a prisoner, Pedro Manrique, ordered by Juan something there, Lith, Alvaro de Luna, Marques de Villena, were also prisoners because of differences with the Order of Santiago, and later on he was owner of the castle. So there we go. And as always, an interesting story behind these buildings. So uh, let's go up and see what remains of this former uh, castle, Castillo de los Piquillos. Let's go. Now, firstly, a very important message from the local council. Please collaborate and make sure that the grounds here are kept clean. And uh, let's have a look at the views. Magnificent. All right, let's get up to the highest point here. Let's see if my footwear stands up to the test. Hopefully it will. Whoop. There we go. All right, good. We've got a ditch here. And the Castillo de Santiago. Está totalmente prohibido el acceso al auto de Castillo. Se trata de un espacio protegido. All right, so we can't go to the very top. So we just have to have a look here. Let's have a look. Let's get, another, let's get a look at the views. Even though there's a lookout over there, we'll get an idea here of what people were protecting or uh, on the lookout for. And as you can see, for as far as you can see, you've got basically flatlands. It gets a bit hilly around two or three kilometers down the track there, but very good views from the top of this uh, hill. That's why the castle's here, obviously, in order to uh, protect the Christians from the Muslim invaders, people that were trying to take over these lands back in the day. Or at least that's the story that I was told. So if you want more about the story of this castle, Wikipedia, or one of the many history pages online, but the view's magnificent. Now let's go to the uh, lookout over there. And uh, I'll just go over here quickly because there's a, there's a cemetery, as I said. So we'll check out the cemetery from here. There we go. So an important place in this town, not only the castle here, but also the cemetery. Let's go over to the uh, lookout. Now I'm gonna go a different route to the lookout, a safer route. Well, so they've built this new part here Somebody obviously not paying attention to the sign that told them not to leave rubbish lying around. And uh, when you stand up here, 
you get a feeling for what it would have been like all those centuries ago, 10, 11 centuries ago, you were posted up here. Your job was to keep an eye out and make sure that the enemy forces were not approaching uh, probably along that road there, which obviously nowadays is a modern highway, but I imagine that many centuries ago, it was also an important way to get to the city of Madrid. And as I said, when you stand up here and have a look out over these fields here, you get a real sense of the history and all of the things that have taken place in this country over the centuries. Absolutely magnificent, and uh, sometimes you forget that you're living in a modern European country nowadays. And as we can see down there with the amount of traffic on that road, that is definitely the case. And that is the town of Fuente Dueña de Tajon. From up here, uh, the typical town in this part of the Madrid community, and also this part of Spain. Now the idea is to go back down there, I'll head to the main square, and then we'll go back and look at some of those irrigation fields, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that story that I picked up on uh, with that movie and Hemingway's narration, some of the things that he said in that movie. So uh, it's back down we go. Luckily the walk down is a lot easier than the walk up. Now up ahead we've got a sign there advertising a Casa Rural, which is uh, some type of uh, country style accommodation, very popular, jacuzzi, uh, you've got a hydro massage, sauna, uh, what else we got there, chimney, uh, rooms with uh, bathrooms, so a real luxury accommodation there. Now a quick view back up the hill to where I was a few minutes ago. The church is over there. The thing about this town is that everything is close. Nothing is too far away. Only two and a half thousand people. We've got a psychology business over there in case people need that. And uh, walking down the main street, or at least I think this is the main street here. With the amount of activity, it must be. One car just gone past, another car going past here. It is busy, busy, busy in Fuente Duero del Tajo today. And an important piece of writing over here, un pueblo que cuida sus mayores, cuida sus raíces. A town that looks after its elderly, looks after its roots. An important message there for us all, don't you think? Now to my right, we have the Civil Guard building, Casa Cuartel green sign there of the civil guard not a lot of activity there today either not sure if this is a civil guard unit that is open 24 hours a day seven days a week or one of these new civil guard posts which only opens during the day closed at night because they allow other uh, civil guard units to control these streets not sure if that's the case here and some sculpture work going on over here don quixote sancho panza and dulcinea three of the most important characters of Spanish folklore. And as always, no town is complete without a tobacco shop. Now I'm also on the lookout for a bakery. Apparently there's a good bakery in this town, a Galician bakery. Uh, so I don't know where it is. I might have to go to Google Maps to try and find it, but I imagine it's gonna be in this part of the town here because this is the main strip, as I said. Everything is going on in this part of the town. We've got supermarkets over there. We've got a uh, drug store over there, perfume store, pharmacy here on the corner, and another fountain. Elena Soriano, Fuente Dueña de Tajo. And uh, Elena Soriano, I think, was an important author back in the day. Yes, she was. She's from this town, and uh, she was a famous author back in the day, was Elena Soriano. Now there's a couple of ladies over here. I just want to ask where the bakery is. So I'll go over there and uh, try and find out. Let's uh, see. Disculpa, señora, una panadería por aquí? En el chino. No, pero hay una gallega, ¿no? Sí, bueno, aquí al fondo hay un pelín a la izquierda. Ah, muy bien. Pero está cerca. Sí, al final de esta calle un pelín a la izquierda a la vez. Muy bien, muchas gracias. De nada. So the bakery, according to those two señoras, is uh, just down here to the left, and I'm going to see if the bread is as good as they say it is. Don't know. Let's go and find out. Okay, I have found the bakery. Let's go and check it out. Don't know if I'll be able to record inside, but uh, let's see. Buenos días. 
Quiero una... No tengo más que... Una barra. No hay mucho, ¿no? No queda mucho. Eh, ¿Qué eh, tenemos entonces? Y una eh, candela en hueco. ¿La redonda qué son? Eh, candela. Pues voy a llevar una de esas. Vale. ¿Esta le gusta? Sí, por ejemplo. A ver. ¿Puedo pagar? Vamos a ver, no tengo aquí cinco. Muchas gracias. Buen día. Adiós. Chao. Now, I've got the bread, importantly. Go for a walk down here. I'm going to drop this off at the car. So I want to pick up some notes that I uh, wrote a few things down a little bit earlier. Now look at this building here in front of me. This is the uh, Constitution Square. This is one of the buildings here. I reckon that building dates back a fair bit as well. Now, let's talk a little bit more about that movie that I referred to earlier in today's video, The Spanish Earth. It's 1937, the Spanish Civil War was raging, and the two sides in that Civil War, the Republican side and the Nationalist side, were at loggerheads to get control of this country. The Republican government at the time decided to put out a propaganda movie, and uh, some very important international people that were involved in the Spanish Civil War, namely Orson Welles and Ernest Hemingway, uh, contributed to this movie. And the opening scenes in that movie, you can watch it on YouTube, which is what I did yesterday, were set in this town, as I said. Very important story when it comes to irrigation, because these fields behind me are a very important source of food, as I mentioned also at the beginning of the video for the Madrid community and also other parts of Spain. Now, I've got a quote from Hemingway, in fact, the opening quote of that movie, so I'm going to read that now. The village of Fuente Dueña, it was spelt with an E, not an I, back then, where 1,500 people live and work the land for the common good. And as we can see behind me here, these lands, and also in that movie, the opening scene in that movie goes to show just how important these lands are. Important for potatoes, wine, and onion, also something that I learnt watching that movie, The Spanish Earth. Again, it was a movie for propaganda purposes, so you have to take what was said in that movie with a pinch of salt, and we all know the result of the Spanish Civil War. The Nationalist forces won. Mr. Franco and company took control of Madrid after a two and a half year siege, and this town here was important not only because of the fields behind me and the irrigation necessary for these fields that come from the Tajo River or the Tagus River, an important river also, but because of the Madrid-Valencia Highway that I also showed you when I was up the top there. And the objective was to take control of Madrid. And there were some very important battles fought in this part of Spain. Well, it's been an interesting day today visiting this small town here, 50 kilometers away from the center of Madrid, uh, Fuente Dueña de Tajo. We see a man over there working the fields currently and just how important these fields are, not only for the village, but also for the general food consumption in a place like Madrid and also other parts of Spain with the potatoes, the onions, the garlic, and the corn that comes from these fields. It's been interesting walking around talking to some of the locals. People are very friendly here. The encounters that I had with the locals, very friendly. So if you're passing through this part of Spain, if you're driving to Valencia and you happen to pass through this town, stop, check out the castle, buy some bread and say hello to the locals. That would be my advice. I'm gonna wrap the video up now. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. If you've got something to add to the conversation, the comment section is the place for you. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next video that I do in this series. Until then, hasta luego, hasta entonces, bye bye.